Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live in San Francisco at Google Cloud Next 18. My co-host Jeff Frick and I are here with Suhail Dada, VP of Cloud Services for Unity Technologies, one of those popular game engines, for developers of VR, AR, and mobile gaming, as well as game and game developers. A hot use case with Google Cloud. They love the speed, they love the features. We hear in that all way. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, so I wish I was a kid again, because the game experience now is so good, and I'm kind of like a keyboard guy, so I'm not a good console player, but now keyboard's back, and now you got mobile games. I mean, the games are amazing these days. They are, they are. They're amazing, and they're amazing on, on, on every kind of platform. Uh, you, could, you could have mobile games, console games, PC games, input types, keyboards, controllers, VR, it's, uh, it's, it's stunning. I always say, I've been, been observing in the internet, it used to be the, the, really the predictor of what's going to happen in computing and, and user experience, really I think gaming leads a lot of it. Look at virtual currencies, look at blockchain and cryptocurrency, there's been virtual currencies in game for a long time. So it's a really a leading indicator. Um, and certainly as you look at immersive experiences, yep. gaming is not just gaming, it's you know, potentially virtual reality, augmented reality around 3D, this is what you guys do. This is huge. Yeah. It's not just about gaming anymore. Talk about you, what you guys are doing. Take a minute to explain the company. Are you beyond gaming? What are some of the yeah. things you're working on? Yeah, I'd love on? to. Yeah, I think, I, think um, I said this at the keynote, one of the things we fundamentally believe is the world's better with more creators. So those creators uh, for us traditionally have been in gaming, but more and more we see that also happening in film, um, all kinds of media, animation, um, but also lots of industries like automotive and, and others. And so we more and more like to talk ourselves as we're enabling, empowering creators to do what they love to do. And we make, um, we make their lives easier and uh, allow them to, to achieve what they want to. It's just it's a continuation of the democratization trend, right? Because actually all the big hardware companies used to brag about how much time it took to render all the crazy scenes and all these beautiful yeah. big 70 millimeter movies. Everybody can't, can't afford that horsepower doesn't have the time. So with, with engines like what you guys have, you know, you've been able to spread that developer ecosystem out or the creator ecosystem yeah. out dramatically yeah. to allow so much more points of view and people to contribute and to create yeah. all these cool new yeah. things. Yeah, and you know, um, I think Diane actually said this on stage at the Unite event. Uh, our founders may have coined the democratization, democratized development. And 15 years ago, we've always believed that to be true, right? In a, um, we've been for the community, every size of team for as long as we've been around, and it remains yeah. the first principle we use in our mission. Um, we do solve hard problems, we do enable our creators' success, but democratized development is core to everything we do, and we've enabled The younger generation is gravitating towards games, obviously it's a gateway drug to software development, if you think about it. The robotics is another one, you're seeing these maker culture kind of things, really attracting developers at a whole nother level. It's not computer science, software engineering degree, banging out you know, raw you know, machine la language. Yeah. This is like for fun, there's, there's, there's a whole new art, artistry going on. There is, yeah. What is your view on this new trend around software artistry? Because there's engineering certainly involved, the engines are getting smarter, abstraction layers are, are becoming available. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think, um, I think the engineering side of it has always been about you know, raising that level of abstraction so that people can focus on what they love to do. So if you're a game maker, you probably got into making games because you love games and you love making them. You probably didn't get into it to make an engine. So that's always been very true for us and yeah. we've gotten better at that. But some of the things we've learned along the way, of course, to your point, are the various kinds of artists that are actually just as or more critical to these kinds of creative endeavors and We've actually been making great strides in not only helping artists of all kinds work themselves in Unity or in other tools, but also then work seamlessly with engineers, which oftentimes ends up being a place where there is friction. But in an environment like Unity, you can't have a lot of separation, right? We have a 3D environment, you put this on your computer, you work in it, you build your models, you write your scripts, you write all of that in one cohesive way because otherwise, Games take way longer to build, they um, have all kinds of issues in communication, so. 
I think it's yeah. quite. I always love to watch the game, um, the, the game threads on Reddit, EA, and these guys. You know, the corporate's taking over. You're seeing more more younger artists coming in. You guys have to maintain your relevance to keep those developers happy. You got to continue to innovate. Gaming is a lot of pressure. Yes. Um, how do you guys keep up? What are some of the things you're doing with tech? What do you bring into the market? How do you keep ratcheting up the capability so yeah. that they don't flock somewhere else, or, or frankly, you, so you can create, so they can create better product. Right, I think, I think probably the highest level principle there is leading on from democratize, but we focus a lot on our community of creators, um, um, both in terms of the content, the samples, the learning, the tools, something Google does quite well actually, and that's been instrumental in, in empowering this community that's very strong. I mean, it is in many ways our greatest strength. We have a huge number of developers and artists and creators that work with Unity. So if you were to want to create something and you were looking for answers, using our services or others, you can go out there. Now on the technology side, the way we look at it is in many ways, we've looked at it as your engine team. So performance by default, some of the things that we're doing to make um, really, really high performance, efficient computing on all kinds of devices, uh, letting you do more with them. But then also, there's a responsible aspect, which is if you think about improving the performance and, and power consumption on devices uh, is very important to us. And then, you know, an area where we're really putting in a lot of effort now is the cloud and with Google on connected games, which is why yeah, so let's talk about yeah, that, because yeah, yeah. we're, we're here, and it's interesting, the creator conversation, because obviously Google owns YouTube, which has you know, spawned a whole different kind of yeah. class of, yeah. of creators that are disrupting the, the media, uh, yeah. media business. So you're here, kind of, what does Google give to you guys? Why are you partnering with them? What's kind of the story? Right, of course. So um, we talk about connected games, right? So what we mean by that, of course, are games where players can connect to each other and or to the developers that create them. Oftentimes we use the term multiplayer, which of course is a particular subgenre of connected games. Uh, they run the gamut from uh, a game that you might play on your phone uh, and, and then you interact with other players through leaderboards and um, chat and things like that. So they're connected not necessarily real-time multiplayer. And on the other side of the spectrum, you might have uh, a game where you run around and interact with each other in real time in a 3D environment, or a massive multiplayer game where um, you, you, you stay in that world for many, many, many years and you act as a character. So all of, because Unity has so many creators, the entire spectrum of those games, connected games, are important to us, important to our users. For all those games, you need massive amounts of infrastructure. Um, you need lots of infrastructure, you need performance infrastructure, you need the best network, and you need lots of services that help you, again, to the earlier point, focus on making your game. Right, and this is an area that both Unity and Google care deeply about. Right, if you, if you take a small studio, or even a large studio for that matter, that got into business to create their game, they don't want to spend all of their time learning how to make an engine or set up a bunch of infrastructure. So the area where we're focusing a lot now is, is that marriage between Google and Unity where you can, because of our alliance, we can raise that level of abstraction to your earlier point and let yeah. them build connected games in an easier way. Talk about the role of data because obviously you, know, you look at the data that's generated. I mean, which could be user gesture data. I mean, everything's tracked. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big data solution yeah, problem, opportunity you guys have. Yeah, and I, I think, so one of the things we like to say, of course, is you know we're a platform. We enable our users to build and run successful games. Um, and our users being the developers and artists, that data is theirs. Um, and then they are able to then do really wonderful things with that data if they so choose. Um, and so, you're right, for the games that have so many players online and all these actions, there is an amazing amount of data, but fundamentally in an anonymized way around what makes games more fun. Right. And that's a, very, that's a hard problem to solve. It's why, why our creators have the hardest problem of it, of it all, right, is, yeah. is make something fun, where data can play a huge role in that. How's the relationship with Google Cloud and your engine with those developers? Do they get 
the magic of Google, you pass that through, or, they, is it, or is it built into your product that's abstracted away Yeah, from? It's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of things. So I think there's, there's one side which is um, um, us building services that run on top of Google Cloud. So, so if, for instance, you need a matchmaker, which is a very common piece of technology, but quite complicated piece of technology for games, uh, is to match players into games quickly. We are working with Google, we're collaborating on an open source project uh, that called OpenMatch that comes out later this summer, and then we're building a service on top of that that our users can just pick up and use. It runs on Google Cloud. At the same time, Google brings many other capabilities to bear, things like maps and other capabilities from GCP that they can then bring to our users in a more direct way rather than building a product together. And then of course, um, Unity actually now runs quite a few cloud services and we're going to migrate all of those to Google Cloud as well. Yeah. So it's sort of three aspects of, of that. And what's your vision for Unity? If you look forward, looking at what's coming on with Google, obviously the future of your engine, looking at the creator market, uh, Hollywood, I was just at Sundance, I did a, I did a, a panel with Intel on, on the future of entertainment, and, and we talked about the new artists coming in, and the, you have the social networks now are forming, this game, this, this game connector concept is pretty huge. Yeah. This is a new dynamic, so you got to build new services. What's your yeah. vision of how you're going to build out these cloud services? Uh, can you share your vision and thoughts on? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so I think the, you know, within the space of connected games, of course, like I said, there's many different categories of these games, and, but there are some fundamental building blocks uh, that you can build, that we can build together, Google and Unity can, to empower all of these kinds of games. Matchmaking is a particular example. But at the end of the day, games that you know, blur the lines between they're running on a device, they're running on a PC, they're running on a console, or they let players pick them up wherever they go, but also interact with each other, right? Because as AR and VR and these virtual worlds come to fruition, more and more it's going to be about us interacting not just in the virtual world, but also in the real world, and able to do that. And most of those things are predicated on this world that exists online, and it's all running on infrastructure. Right. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure that's, that's required there. So we've got a really rich roadmap over the next many, many years to continue to invest in this area and help our users create these kinds of games because they are in the games world, the most influential kind, but more and more in other areas of our life, they're also going to be the same technologies that are applied there. Right. i just love to get your perspective. You've been in this space for a long time, gaming, but also 3D specifically. And yeah. you know, 3D is so still nascent. It's, it's, it's hard to do for, for most people. This, you know, the, the experiences are still yeah. being developed, but it's come so long. So as you, as you look at kind of where 3D has evolved, uh, both to create it as well as to experience. Now, kind of what are your general thoughts of where we are on that path, and what do you see kind of in the short term and near term in terms of how that's really going to change the way we do things, whether it's work, gaming, or yeah. experiencing other types of yeah. things? Sure, I think that, um, you know, I'd like to go back to one of the things you said where you, when, you know, when you're playing games you have to stand up. I mean, we've come a long way. <laughs> so, we have come a long way. You look at some of the content, the games that are being produced, you even look at, um, just the kinds of content and the interactive content that's being created in Unity, it's amazing if you look at how far we've come. I, I think, you, you, to your point, you're right, there is a long way to go, there's lots of, I mean, all hardware, all our hardware capabilities just continue to get better. Like the latest phones, the latest consoles, they're so powerful, right? We have these supercomputers in our pockets with amazing capabilities and consumers demand that kind of stuff, yeah. the latest level of graphics. So I think, I think all of that stuff continues. I think our CEO, he, um, John, talked about, you know, in the sort of AR and VR, we we kind of going through this level of excitement, and then we have the trough of disillusionment and right. all these kinds of things, right? So we're we're you know we've got some elements of that, but there's a lot of great companies doing a lot of fantastic yeah. stuff, and I think that that that's going to come to bear. And so I think Unity is there with them, and we we really well positioned. The tell signs them. are there. You're seeing people using VR in areas that um, give them a unique thing. So it's a scarce areas, whether it's pharmaceutical doctors. I see, even heard Tom Brady um, uses a, uh, VR to look at defenses before he plays games. Yeah. Yeah. But, but 
This, this, is, this is an interesting uh, question for you though, I want to get your thoughts, because you have a unique position to see the data, uh, what your game engine is doing. For the folks out there, the young kids who are in elementary school, high school, that love games, okay, that um, don't necessarily want to be a computer science major, maybe yeah. they don't even have a, a direction at any kind, but want to start hacking away and start coding. What patterns do you see that would help someone get started and so they don't drop out or abandon it, get, get addicted if you will. What are some of the things you could share that you've seen successful uh, getting someone involved in either coding games, yeah. getting involved in the community? What are some of the best practices or patterns that you've seen? Right, I mean, so I think, I think there's probably a technical answer to that and then there's a non-technical one. I think your word community resonates with me a lot, right? So for anyone starting out, I think there's a lot that an individual creator can accomplish but given the world we're in, the, we have these extremely rich communities that are helping each other. Whether it's the open source community, in the more general sense, you know, for web or servers, but even in machine learning, if you hear the guy from Kaggle talk, they were talking about the machine learning community, and it was pretty amazing to hear him talk about that. For us, it's the creator community, and we have a really rich one. And there's lots of people there that bring many skills to bear, which ends up being way more critical than uh, than, than things like very specific technology trends for, yeah. for this kind of thing. So I think, I think so that's really mentoring important. mentoring and, and, and stuff going on in the creator community. People well, are helping each other big time. There's a huge amount. I mean, this notion of developers and creators helping each other, sometimes not for any money, yeah. um, is, is, is a trend being seen everywhere, not just... So advice is jump into a community, you know, get it, get it, check in. Yeah. I, I think it's probably cliched a little bit. If you can find a project or a set of projects or a type of thing that you really enjoy to yeah. doing, uh, you'd be surprised at what skills you can bring to bear. And everyone needs help. So download the emulator. Get some code in your hands. Yeah, up into Unity's a community. free. Download it. It's easy to get started. And yeah. then and then work with the community. I think almost always it's find a project that you really care about awesome. and start helping. Final question for you to wrap up the segment. For the people that are not, not inside the ropes in the industry that are looking at Google, see Google Cloud, wow, a lot of buzz on Google Cloud. Knowing what we knew two years ago, you know, OG, the original app engine kind of concept was Google Cloud. Now, so much more. What would you say to the people watching now? How has Google Cloud changed? What's different? What are they doing right? And where do they need to improve? Um, yeah, so, so even before Unity, I've been a user of aspects of Google Cloud and app engine. And I think they have come an amazing way in terms of the, the way they're approaching every other aspect that isn't just the technology aspect. I think the tech, it's Google. They've always been it's great incredible, tech. right? Yeah, great so tech, yeah. Their network is incredible, their server's incredible. So they've always been extremely good at that. But the things that are so much better, the level of support, they're working with us very closely all across their organization. Um, we are enjoying working with them a lot and they're really trying to help us be successful much like we help our creators. So, so that's resonating with us a lot and we found that to be great. And I think that you know, I, I, everything I see makes us quite happy that, that we uh, are yeah. uh, partners with them. And, and they're bringing some goodies to the party. They've brought open source contributions. Yeah. Pretty phenomenal. I mean, Kubernetes, I mean, that's just game changing right there. You got BigQuery. I mean, they got some... <laughs> <laughs> They're contributing some, some jewels. They have some amazing tech that can be brought to bear on a lot of different things, right? So yeah. we're a heavy Kubernetes user and have been for a while, even before we were Google partners. So I think this is great. Things that, yeah. things that they announced with GKE, this conference, uh, really matter to us, GKE on-prem. And then they're also a very partner-driven company. And I think they recognize our knowledge and, and expertise in games, and I think that that's an area where their expertise in cloud and our expertise in games can be uh, very, very I think great. it's a great opportunity for Google to make the market on the partnership ecosystem side. They have a lot they can bring to the table. Yeah. You know, they can make people successful and make people can make money and deliver great products. Yeah. That's a winning formula, yeah, exactly. right? So, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Congratulations on your success. Thank Thanks you. for coming on theCUBE. Thank Thanks you. for sharing the insight into Unity uh, Technologies. It's theCUBE, bringing you all the action here out in the open with Google Cloud. More coverage, stay with us. We're on day three of three days of live coverage. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Stay with us, we'll be right back.